Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. We will look at objects this week. We have already talked about the window object as being the top level object. We have learned about the alert method, the prompt method, and now we will take a look at the confirm method. The confirm method puts a box on the screen similar to the alert and the prompt. If you take a look at the source code, here we have confirm and it takes one parameter, a question which has a statement which will be displayed in the um, message box. Confirm has two buttons. If the user clicks the first button, essentially it returns true. If they click the, the next button, it returns false. And they say OK and cancel by default. So here we have an if condition. If the response is true, it means that they clicked OK. And we can test that with an alert. Else, they must have clicked the other button. We have also talked about the document object model. And this is the top level object in the document object model. We have looked at the write method, which is relatively obsolete. The write ln method, which is supposed to cause a line break at the end. It doesn't seem to be supported anymore. We have also looked at document get element by ID. So that is the get element by ID method of the document object. And we will be continuing to look at that this method this week. So this is relatively new to us this week. The document object model allows us to access any HTML element by making an object reference to that element. We accomplish this by this document.getElementById. This is the method. And what this method does, it makes an object reference. It doesn't return the, the type of tag. It, it gets an object reference to it. All right, let's turn for a minute and look at the text box object. Here I have a form element. And here's input type equals text. This is essentially a text box. Notice I have an ID attribute. You always need to have an ID attribute so that JavaScript can reference that element. The name attribute is part of the form technology. If we were sending this information to a server-sided script, the name element is used to Id uniquely identify that element. In JavaScript, we uniquely identify using the ID attribute. The label element is, is used in HTML form programming to identify this object. So let's take a look at our example that we'll see again next week. The text box object has a method, a focus method. And that focus method is when you see that blinking cursor. That is giving focus to a text box. We also have a property called value. How we retrieve the value the user enters in a text box is using the value property. We can also disable that by um, the disable property. So, so this is some JavaScript method and properties that work with this HTML element. So let's take a look at the, the syntax used for retrieving values. If we look at our HTML element, input type equals I text, ID equals F name. The first thing we need to do is to create an object reference to that element here. And we do that with document.getElementById. 
we will store that object reference in a variable called first name. Now, we can use that variable called first name to retrieve the value. And notice we are storing the value back in, into this variable. And then if we were to call an alert, see that in the alert box. Notice this is a very fine way to do it. We're using, we're initializing the variable, then we're storing value again in the variable. There is another way to do this, and this is used by a term called chaining. Chaining refers to the ability in JavaScript to string multiple methods. So here we have document dot get element by ID dot value. We could have done this in one line of code. One thing you want to real remember is that a text box always returns a string value. So if you are going to do numeric calculations based on user values entered in a form, you would need to use parse int or parse float in order to convert that string to a number so that you can perform calculations. Alright, let's look at the document object model. This is actually a hierarchical tree representation of our document. It consists of descendants, parents, children, and siblings. And this is an example here of what we mean by this hierarchical representation, our elements. We have the top level HTML, which is split into the body and the head. The head would contain a title. The body would conta contain a heading, a paragraph, and more. So we can represent everything in our HTML document in a tree structure. This is the document object model that we use in JavaScript, with JavaScript, I should say. All of these different parts of the tree are called nodes. We have different types of nodes. We have element nodes. These would be an actual HTML element, which is accessed by the, me the method getElementById. We have text node. A text node is the text inside the opening and closing tags of the element. We can access that by firstchild.node value. We have attribute nodes, which are attributes of an HTML element. And we have comment nodes, which are HTML comments. So this firstchild.node value, this expression, is new to us in this class. Let's take a look at the another example of the document object model hierarchy. Let's first look at our HTML code on the left. Here we have our HTML element and in our head we have a title. The title contains the text my title. In the body we have an A element. I don't have a value for href but I do have the text, my link, inside the opening and closing a tags. Next I have an h1, and it has the text, my header, and now I'm ending the body. Notice we only have two elements, they're on the same level, technically they are siblings. Let's take a look at the hierarchical structure. Here's the document object. We have the HTML element, which is considered the root. That breaks down into the head and the body. The head contains the title tag. The title tag, tag contains a text node, my text. Over on the body, we have an A element, which contains a text node, and it also contains an attribute node. We have also the H1 element, which contains a text node. H1 and A are siblings. H1 and A are siblings. They are both children of body, which is the parent. Body and head are siblings and children of HTML.
So the question comes in, how do we modify the text of an HTML element? There are four steps that I will go over. The first thing we always have to do is to access that element, which essentially means we're creating an object reference to it. And we do this by document docket element by ID. So let's take a look at my example here. Here's my h3, id equals my h3, and we have some text inside. So this is the example that we'll be using. So we have the id, my h3, and we're going to create an object reference to that. Step number two, we need to access the text node. So the text node is what's inside the opening and closing element. We access that by the first child property. So here we have this statement, which essentially is allowing us to access this text node. The next thing we need to do is we need to use the node value property to access the text itself for that node. Okay, so the node value will actually allow us to change it eventually. So now we have, we're building our expression and we're chaining document docket element by id dot first child node dot node value. Lastly, we need to set a value. So on the right hand side of this expression, now we have an equal sign, equals hello. So the value hello is being stored over here on the left. And what that is tell, ex, representing is that it's allowing us to change the node value of this first child of this element. And we can set the value. Now why not just use inner HTML as we have done it previously? It's much easier. Technically inner HTML is not part of the JavaScript is part of the JavaScript language. It's not part of the document object model. So from here on in, we are learning the uh, official document object model. All right, I would like to also go over the date object, which is referenced in the book. Not much is discussed on it. I have a lot of additional information uh, on in the, in the sample code. The date object is a JavaScript object. It is, its syntax is date with parentheses, capital D, uppercase D. The date object returns the day, the number of the day, the number of the month, the number of the year, the number of hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So we can actually retrieve any part of this date object. Date objects are commonly used in the industry. You see them all the time on eBay when the auctions go on and off and on Blackboard when I program things to be activated and when I set due dates. Uh, behind the scenes we are manipulating the date object. The date object officially begins on January 1st, 1970 at midnight. This is also called the epoch or unique. There are 86,400,000 milliseconds in one day which is the, the baseline we use for doing date calculations. We create, a, we, we start using the date object by creating an instance of the object. So this is the date object, which stores the amount of time that has elapsed since January 1st, 1970 at midnight. And we use the, the new keyword. So this is a new keyword and we are creating what is called an instance of the object. So we are storing a reference to this object in the variable today using the keyword operator there. So this is the object. We are creating a new instance of it, storing it in today. So today is now my date. And if I wanted to use this alert, and if it just so happens that I did this, on February 14th, 2013, this is what it would show me in the browser. Now, one thing, different browsers might have different representations of the date, but they're re relatively similar. All right, so here again, this object 
holds the number of milliseconds since the epoch. If we wanted to do a calculation with a certain date, we can just insert that date inside the parentheses. So once we have obtained, created the date, our date today, we can use different methods of the date object to get the different parts of the date. Get date returns the date number of the month from 1 to 31. Get day returns the integer from 0 to 6. So we would have to do some kind of calculations, such as an if, if we wanted to write the day of the week. Because JavaScript, as all computers do, work in numbers. It returns an integer from 0 to 6. Today.getMonth returns an integer from 0 to 11. So if we wanted to use the month, we would need to do some calculations. Uh, beginning with 0 as January, 0 here with Sunday. We have a get full year method because unfortunately JavaScript had a Y2K problem. When the language was first developed, it was get year and it returned the year as a two digit date. So back in 1999, we now have get full year so that we can return the year as a four digit date. Because the, the date object also stores time, we can use it to return different parts of time. We can get time will return all the milliseconds. We can get milliseconds, seconds, minute, hours. So the data object is actually used in creating a computer clock. Um, there's a little bit more code involved and I do have an example of that in the sample code. So this is an example of date calculation. Supposing we wanted to, supposing this was last year, um, and we wanted to see all the dates, how many days until Christmas. Suppose we wanted to write something on our web page saying there are so many days until Christmas. The first thing we always need to do is to create an instance of the date object. And here, we're only interested in a certain date. So this is December 25th, 2013. So we're storing this value in a variable days to Christmas. And now here's today. So each of these holds milliseconds. Now we're going to do a date calculation. So days Christmas minus today divided by the number of milliseconds in a day. But we need to round that down. So we're using the math object. And now we can just use an alert and echo back that value. So this is just an example of using the date object. I have a lot of additional sample code for the date object on the public box folder.